Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to have a look at AMD's $130 CPU from 2012, the FX 6300. I've been getting quite a few comments asking me to review one of these and honestly, I am very surprised at how many of you are still rocking a 6-core FX processor. Due to a very popular demand from my previous video, I'm also going to be comparing it to the Phenom 2X6-1090T in stock, clock for clock and overclocked configurations, which I should upload around a week after this video goes live. So if you're interested, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notifications. We have a ton of data to go through today and we'll be looking at how the FX6300 performs at stock together with an overclock in plenty of software and games. So without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. For the system specs, we're using a Gigabyte 990FXA UD3 Revision 4 motherboard, a Zalman CNPS 14X CPU cooler, 8GB of DDR3 1600MHz memory, an MSI GTX 970 with an overclock of 125MHz on both core and memory clocks, and a 700 watt FSP Hydro power supply. For the overclocked configuration, I was able to push the FX6300 to 4.6 GHz using 1.4 volts. The North Bridge and Hyper Transport were set to 2630 MHz and the RAM was clocked at 2104 MHz. The CPU unfortunately was already getting pretty hot at 72 degrees Celsius, so I couldn't really push it any further. But other than that, this is as much as I could squeeze out of this system. By the way, I'm not exactly sure if those temperatures are normal, since my FX8350 gets very similar temps, also at 4.6 GHz but using 1.5 volts. So if you have any idea, please be sure to let me know. Keep in mind that most of the games that we are going to be testing today do not benefit from more than 8GB of RAM, and since the GTX 970 is not a very powerful graphics card, all the games were tested using lowest settings at a resolution of 1600 by 900 to reduce any GPU bottlenecks. Also, I must mention that while I will include some gameplay footage using the stock configuration, we're mostly going to focus at overclocking results. Alright, let's begin with Cinebench R15, where the overclocked FX6300 is able to score 109 points for the single core and 548 points for the multi-core, which is an increase of 16 and 31% respectively over stock settings. Next, we have Blender, and using the BMW benchmark, the overclocked 6-core FX processor gets the scene rendered in 17 minutes and 30 seconds, which is a 24% increase over stock. Using the classroom scene, we're getting an identical performance uplift of 25%, finishing the render in 52 minutes and 51 seconds. Moving on we have Corona, which the overclocked FX6300 manages to render in 7 minutes and 1 second, and once again it's a 24% uplift over stock. Next up we have V-Ray, and here we're getting a 29% increase over stock settings. Next, we have Intel Burn Test, and just like in V-Ray, the overclocked FX6300 gets a 29% uplift over stock, finishing the test in 5 minutes and 27 seconds. Moving on to gaming benchmarks, let's begin with some older stuff and slowly make our way to newer titles. Starting off, we have GTA 5, which the stock FX6300 is able to handle just fine, with the frame rate ranging from around 45 to 65 FPS most of the time. Overclocking the CPU made a pretty big difference, thanks to which the game is now able to stay above 60 frames per second, while also delivering noticeably better frame times. Next, we have Watch Dogs 2, which is a very CPU-intensive title, and while the stock FX6300 can run the game, the experience is far from smooth. 
Overclocking the system does make the game much more playable though, thanks to a roughly 10 to 15 FPS improvement and a much more consistent frame time. Next up we have The Witcher 3, and once again, at stock the game is playable, though by overclocking we're getting a massive performance uplift, making the gameplay experience more enjoyable. By the way, in case you're still rocking an FX CPU and would like to overclock it, I have an AMD FX overclocking guide, which you can watch in the card at the top right corner. Next, we have Rainbow Six Siege, and while I'm absolutely terrible at this game, I can at least confirm that it is more than playable. One thing that I noticed is that in single player, there are a couple of maps where frames can drop to mid 50s, yet that is not something I've ever experienced while playing online. Moving on to some newer titles, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I gotta say I'm very surprised by the results. I launched the game to test it out expecting a stuttery mess, but it ran flawlessly most of the time. The only couple of moments where the FX6300 struggled was in heavily populated areas where it dropped to high 30s, but otherwise the game was very playable. Do keep in mind though that I disabled DirectX 12, which was turned on by default since it causes the game to stutter for some reason, and I'd suggest you doing so as well. You do get a small FPS hit by disabling DirectX 12, though in return you're getting a much smoother experience. Moving on we have PUBG, and here the 6 core FX performs just fine. There are a couple of locations where you might get drops below 50s, but other than that, the game is pretty playable. Next up we have Battlefield 5, which surprisingly also runs at a playable frame rate. The thing is, you're only limited to 32 player matches on smaller maps since the CPU is already pegged at 100% and that is to be expected from a $130 processor from 2012. I'm not saying that it's unable to run anything else, it is just that the processor is not capable of delivering a very playable experience in those situations. Using these stock settings, the game runs okay and it is possible to get kills and whatnot, though for the best possible experience, overclocking is necessary for this title. For our final game we have Apex Legends, which our FX 6300 overclocked to 4.6 GHz is able to run very smoothly with the frame rate ranging from 75 to 140 frames depending on the area. It looks like you can actually get away without any overclocking whatsoever in this title, since even at stock the game seems to be very playable. 45 seconds. <laughs> Okay, so lastly, let's check out the total system power consumption. At stock, we're getting around 280 watts with rare peaks up to 330s while playing intensive games such as Apex Legends, Battlefield 5, etc. And at idle, we're getting just 98 watts. Overclocking the PC increases the power consumption by around 100 watts while gaming and at idle, the system consumes about 106 watts.
I've been using the CPU for the past few weeks now for web browsing, playing games and whatnot, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm quite impressed at what $130 could get you back in 2012. Even at stock, I had no issues playing pretty intensive games that released back then, such as Crisis 2, Battlefield 3, etc. And it is just crazy how the CPU is still somewhat capable of handling recent titles, without any overclocking whatsoever. The fact that it has an unlocked multiplier is also very useful, since if you ever felt like your CPU was holding you back, you could always overclock it and not upgrade the CPU for another couple of years. Some may argue that I used overkill parts, and that is true. This setup is more geared towards overclocking an 8-core FX processor, though you could easily get away with cheaper components and still get a pretty decent overclock out of your system. Unfortunately, I don't have a cheaper motherboard to demonstrate that, but what I can show you is that I was able to push the FX6300 to 4.2 GHz on all cores using a tiny $15 CPU cooler. Now yes, that is still behind what I was able to achieve using the much bigger Zellman cooler, but at least it shows that you don't really need a beefy heatsink to be able to overclock. Anyways, that's going to be it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to check out more videos on my channel. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see y'all in the next one.